So what was the interview process like for me when I was looking for a job? That is the question that I'm going to be answering today. What's up you guys, it's Sedona. welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. So I had this question asked to me um, a couple weeks ago, I guess you could say, uh, someone asked what was my interview process like? Now obviously this was pre-COVID, so the interview process for you might look a lot different, but for me, this is what it was like. So I passed my boards back in December and immediately after I passed my boards, I started putting out um, my resume on you know sites like ZipRecruiter and Resume.com or whatever the other places are, but Career Builder, those places, because I wanted to get a job, right? That's exactly what you wanna do after you've graduated and passed your boards. So I put that out like, and within the first week I got a lot of responses. And I wouldn't say that it's because like I'm this amazing like PA student grad or anything like that, but it's just that in my particular area of the country, they were like severely and recruiting and hiring PAs and NPs. So um, I think although there was like a lot of people putting their applications out there, there was a lot of jobs that were looking for individuals as well. So that worked out to my benefit. I don't know how many applications I put out. I put out well over 60 applications. Um, I got well over like 20 offers for like interviews and stuff, but I think I only went to about like 10 or 11 interviews. Now, obviously you have to kind of like vet through what you want. Like, do you really want to work at this place? Do you not? And for me, I didn't have like an area that I specifically wanted to work in except for OB which I already knew like it was going to be hard to get into OB right out of PA school because again in my area they're looking for three to five years of experience so I knew that it might be a long shot for that but I did still apply to some OB positions that was out there and I did get called back for an interview for one of those positions but I eventually like turned it down because it was just actually way too far and so those are some of the things that you have to consider and I will talk about that a little bit later but I did want to address the whole how many applications I put out and then getting back the in um, the calls to do an interview so for me like we had the phone interview process first with some of those jobs that I applied to and then I was called in for like an actual in-person interview and after I did the in-person interview uh, for some of the jobs, I got a second interview. Uh, and then for some of them, the first job, I, like the first interview, I would get a soft offer. Now, here's the thing about soft offers, right? Like you're, you're excited, you're happy, because you know, you're like, oh man, the, these people like me, this is great. Um, they're kind of offering me their, uh, uh, like a job because they're saying, hey, you know, so we really like you, but th like this is what we're offering. Um, but I don't know if that's like in the price range of what you want to do because they ask you for a salary that you're expecting. And I like always gave like a range and said that I was flexible because I didn't want to give a specific number and box myself into something. And I also didn't want to like lowball myself or be like extremely unrealistic. So I always gave a range and I always made sure that I did my research beforehand. Like you think that you're done with school and you're done with applying to PA school and things like that and you don't have to do your research, you're always gonna be doing your research on different ventures that you're about to start. And so this is like not like any other thing. You're gonna do your research on the company and the position because I was applying to various different types of PA positions. With that being said, like I would do my research, see what like the average salary of a PA in that position was. I would look at like the APA salary report to see what like a new grad, like one to three year out of PA school uh, PA would be offered at that position. And then I would try to like get an average of that in terms of like what would be realistic for me to actually ask for um, and so that was something that I learned quickly on like how to do because I got like a lot of I felt really low offers um, in the beginning and I think like I kind of like fielded my offers to other people and I was like hey you know like what do you think about this is this a good offer is this not and like they were on board that you know those offers were low so I turned those jobs down or I said like oh no like I'm not really interested anymore and I made sure you know I kept 
the lines of communication open, always sent a thank you card for the interview and always, you know, showed my gratitude in terms of saying, hey, like, I really appreciate you at, like offering me this position or even in interviewing me for the position. And I think that is important for you all to do is always make sure that you send thank you cards because, I mean, it's nothing's guaranteed, right? So um, I always did that, but when it came to looking for jobs, like I said, there was not really like a job per se that I knew that I wanted except for OB, but um, there were jobs that I knew that I didn't want. And so I made sure to just apply to jobs that I could kind of see myself in. And then when I actually got to the in-person interview, I would like ask to shadow or ask to come back and shadow if they were still interested in me or talk to their PA that was working with them or talk to the staff. And I think that is also important for you all to do when you're actually doing this whole interview process. It's kind of get the culture, get like who you're gonna be working with, try to see like if you like the environment because you're going to be spending hopefully a long time there. You know, you're going to be spending a large majority of your day there. And obviously you don't want to just kind of jump from job to job per se, like within the first three months. So you want to make sure that you can actually see yourself there and be happy. So for me, like that was one of the things that I was interested in doing. Now, when I went through like my whole interview, like they would come in. I know somebody asked me like, do did they know about my YouTube channel or did they ask about my YouTube channel? And really and truly, uh, there was only like two or so of the positions, sorry, that asked me about my channel or kind of knew about my channel. One knew and then like one asked about like social media and stuff. And I, you know, told them that, yes, I am on social media. And they like looked me up and they were really excited actually about the channel because they wanted to kind of brand their um, office and try to see if they could get videos and things like that on the internet to kind of just promote their office a little bit more. So that was like working out to my benefit. But again, like I had to take into consideration everything. Like, is this job close enough to my house where I would be happy? Um, was it like, what are the hours? And um, for me, it didn't really pan out because I would be there like pretty much five days a week and I wasn't really too fond of the hours and also I didn't really necessarily like um, the offer as well. So some things that I learned from going through this whole interview process is you know, send out a lot of applications because you have no idea. It's just like PA school, right? They're going to get a lot of applications and they have to windle it down to one person. You're not fighting for one slot um, or one seat out of 40 or 30. You're fighting just for one seat, um, one job. And so it's important for you to just kind of put your feelers out there and make sure that you are not putting all of your eggs in one basket. I also learned that you should not like sit up here and like entertain soft offers. So like, don't do anything, don't say anything, um, don't make any plans until you see something in writing. See like, have them put in front of you an offer saying, hey, like this is what we would like to offer you. And you take like your week or however long it is that they allow you to take to review it, review it with like, if you have like financial or a lawyer or somebody that can review it with you, do that. But you take your time, read through every page and um, you know, kind of tear that thing apart because this is your contract or this is your offer. And so you wanna make sure that it's fair to you and to them. Um, also, speaking of contracts, like, you know, I only do a contract if it's very, very beneficial to you. Like if you're going to sit up here and lock yourself into a position or a job for like a year, two years, three years, there really should be some things on the table that they're offering like tuition reimbursement and, you know, like CME money and hours and maybe even like paying for your licensing and all of that stuff. Um, those things are important. I just did that video about all of the money that you spend for your initial licensure and delegation and things like that. So if you're going to be locking yourself into a contract, contract with somebody, it's important for them to like kind of give up like those funds and be like, yeah, you know, we're investing in you as well. Speaking of investing, go ahead and invest in my channel. Hit that like button, you guys. It really helps my algorithm. And also like consider subscribing because that will help my channel as well. Uh, another thing that I learned actually was 
after you've done your interview and like I said is you know asked to shadow it's really important to know the culture look at the space that you're going to be working in and know that you're feeling comfortable there um, some things that I think you guys should take away especially for those of you that are either new grads now or will be graduating in the upcoming months of like August slash September uh, obviously you're going to be interviewing like kind of in COVID times right we've no idea what the country is going to look like in terms of openings and how open places are going to be. So take that into consideration when you're planning for your interview because you might be doing it online. You know, um, I've had several friends of mine that are doing interviews online and getting flown out for like official official like interviews slash offers, but the initial aspect of things is online. And so kind of like taking the time to like practice online interviews and your interviewing skills like in front of a camera is important for you all because you know like being in front of a camera and your facial expression and everything is important because that's all they're going to see they're not, like they're not going to really see your personality any other way so make sure that you're like smiling and you're happy and you're pleasant because it's going to be important to showcase the personality that you have that they can't otherwise see because they're, you're not in person with them. But that ultimately is kind of like how my whole like interview slash job hunt process was. Applied to like over 60 jobs, got called like, you know, called back for like about 20, got interviews, like actually went to the interview of about 11, um, got a few offers actually, like maybe half or so of that 11 were offers. And then um, ultimately, like I settled on the one that I'm at right now, this trauma gen surge position, but uh, it kind of really happened very like organically and just kind of quickly honestly because I did my rotations there it was it was great like just kind of a good feel got the job offer got the official offer and um, the rest is history right and now I'm a trauma PA uh, gen surge PA so uh, it's really it's really exciting um, I know it can be nerve-wracking but I think ultimately what you should take away from this is don't put all your eggs in one basket be pleasant, um, make sure you send out some thank you letters and enjoy the process. All right, if you guys have any other questions for me, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. We're at 30,000 subscribers, like this is great. This is amazing. And I wouldn't be here without each and every one of you. So thank you guys. Please follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA. Like this video and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time.